All right, kiddos, in our last video, we talked about how to put numbers into scientific notation, how to take them out of scientific notation. We're going to briefly in this video cover how to do calculations um, with numbers that are in scientific notation. Now, as I alluded to in the last video, um, what is much more likely is you're just going to punch things into your calculator, get the correct answer out that way, and your calculator will do all the manipulation that's necessary. But there are cases where you won't have the calculator, and so I think that it's important that you know how to do this um, for those given situations. So let me, we're going to start with multiplication and division. Those are the two easy things. Also, conveniently, they're the two easy things. They're also the two things that it's about 95% of what we do. Okay, so that's really good. Then we'll do a quick addition and subtraction one, um, and then I will really briefly show you about what do you do if the answer doesn't come out strictly in scientific notation. So, multiplication, let me write the problem down real quick. Okay, so two numbers in scientific notation, we're gonna multiply them together. Again, this is a scenario that you'll find yourself in hundreds of times this year. Um, and here's the way it works. So if you recall from our previous videos, um, that there are two parts to a scientific notation number. There's the coefficient, okay, and there's the exponent. So here's the way it works, and this is largely true for all of the problems, um, is that you're going to do the math on the coefficient part, and then there's something else that you're going to do to the exponents. And so we're going to do that. It's real straightforward for multiplication. For multiplication, you do the math. In other words, multiply the two things that are the coefficient. So 2.0 multiplied by 3.5 is going to give me an answer of 7.0 for the coefficient part. Now I have to figure out what to do for the exponents. For multiplication, couldn't be easier. Multiplication, you're going to add the exponents. So 3 plus 2 gives me 5, and we're done. It's really as straightforward as that. Okay, I'm going to do a division one real quick. You'll see that it's very similar. In fact, if you're thinking about it, you can probably already think about in your head what's going to happen there. Okay, so let me write uh, division one up. We'll roll through that real quick. All right, so pretty straightforward division problem. Again, two scientific notation numbers. Difference here is we're going to divide them instead of multiplying them. Um, the math part is the same. In other words, whatever math the mathematical operator here is, which is division, we're going to do that operation on the coefficients. So I'm going to divide 8 by 2. 8 divided by 2, of course, is 4. Okay. And so for multiplication, we added the exponents. So for division, since division is the reciprocal operation, instead of adding the exponents, we're going to subtract them. So 5 minus 2 gives me an exponent of 3. You might be sort of asking yourself, well, what if, what if that was, instead of 5 minus 2, if it was like 5 minus 7, what would happen then? Well, in that case, then I would get a negative 2 for the answer. So you could get a negative exponent for that. You could do that for multiplication also if you started off with some negative numbers. So don't let that bother you or weird you out or anything like that either. Okay, so that's, that's how that's going to work. So multiplication, division, 95% of what we're going to do in chemistry, probably the same thing in physics. That's pretty straightforward and hopefully easy. Let me show you real quick how to do addition and subtraction, and then we'll talk about what you do if your answer doesn't come out to be quite as neat and tidy as the ones that I'm working with. Okay, so addition and subtraction. Um, this is a little, not really that much more complicated, but this is for me, I almost always punch these into my calculator to make sure that I got them right at least, um, because we gotta do some shifting here. So again, we're, the coefficient, we're gonna do the mathematical operation, but here's the difference between this and, and multiplication and division. Multiplication and division, I multiplied or divided the coefficients, did that, put my number there, and then worried about the exponent. In addition and subtraction, you have to worry about the exponent first and then do the math. And the reason for that is for addition and subtraction, they have to have the same exponent. Obviously, these are not the same, so if they're not the same, you have to make them the same. In other words, you're going to have to shift your decimal place to make sure that all of the exponents are exactly the same. Now, you don't have to do it this way, but my word of advice to make it easy is pick whatever your highest exponent is and make everything that exponent, okay? In other words, shift your decimal to make everything the highest one. I really think that if you have a consistent pattern, it just makes all of that a little bit easier. You don't have to do it that way if you want to make them all the lowest one. If you're adding up six numbers and you want to go for the middle one, have at it as long as you're actually moving the decimal correctly. What's important is that they all have the same exponent before you start. So. I said that I want to make it whatever the highest one is, so I'm going to turn my 13 here into a 14. Remember that the way that that works is that for every shift to the left, okay, for the decimal, so I'm going to move my decimal from here to here, 
that that raises the exponent one. That was true when we put numbers into scientific notation also. Okay, so that gives me my exponent part now is done. And so now we just do the math. Okay, now we just add them. So 1.5 plus 0.2 gives me 1.7, and we're correct. Again, I think this is a really great case for work it out in your head, and if you're allowed to use your calculator, check it with your calculator. I'm not saying you should never work them by hand. You should, but certainly the first few that you work and you're practicing on, as we will definitely do, check them. Okay? I mess them up too. You might too. So just check them just to be sure. All right, so let me work one more that would be, hey, what if it doesn't come out to be the way it should be? Okay, because I definitely don't want to be that teacher that gives you a bunch of easy stuff and then you've got harder ones to work. I want to make sure that you see one that maybe it doesn't look as pretty and everything or it's not quite right when you're done. So I've got a negative and a positive in this one. I'm doing multiplication. So I'm going to do what we did in the last stuff. I'm going to go ahead and do the math for the coefficient part. We'll add up the exponents, and we'll see what the answer is. So 6.0 times 2.5 is going to give me 15.0 times 10 to the 6 plus negative 3 gives me 3. Okay, so that seems pretty straightforward. You're like, great, we're done. That wasn't hard. Why would you say that's hard? That's the right answer, right? So pause for just a second and see if you can tell what is not correct about that answer. So if you said, hey, I can only have one number to the left of the decimal if I'm in scientific notation, you are absolutely correct. So what that means is that I have to move my decimal to actually put the number into scientific notation. Okay, and here's the deal. If, you're, if you've got a times 10 to something, you should always make sure that you shifted it to only have one number left of the decimal. If you were wanted to expand it out or whatever, if I wanted to make this 15,000, okay, that would be fine. Um, but if, that, if the times 10 to the exponent is there, you need to make sure that you shift it so that there is only one number to the left of that decimal. Now, again, what does that mean when I shift it over one space? Well, that means that I've now changed the exponent. The exponent is now to the fourth. So let me tidy that up just a little bit. Times 10 to the fourth. Okay? Calculations of scientific notation. You will... You'll definitely need some practice on it. I would say that, you know, whether you're working for me or for some other teacher, you probably want to make sure that you're, you know, that you've worked through 20 or so of the problems. It'll take you probably all of 10 minutes. Run through them real quick and then bust out your calculator and make sure that you go through it and do that. I want to highly encourage every student, though, that's doing scientific notation for chemistry, physics, something like that in high school, to watch the next video that's going to show you how to do calculations, how to enter them in correctly to your calculator to make sure that you're getting all this exponential stuff correct. All right. Thanks a lot, kiddos.